deliverance is normally understood as though the unwanted elements unwanted powers of darkness which is not of god somehow it has come into my life somehow it has come into my body so it has to be thrown away so we come into the name of the lord and ask the evil spirit to go away this is a shallow understanding of the ministry of deliverance it is not the real ministry the real ministry of the deliverance we read in the book of isaiah chapter 64 verse 5 onwards the children of god who are called to live a glorious mighty life they at the end of the day they who began their lives with the spirit they end up with their flesh they who began their ministry of priesthood their ministry of preaching the word their ministry of serving god their ministry of being a christian family end up with a broken family end up with a disturbed family they don't understand their ministry that's why sin that's why isaiah said all of us have become like the unclean all our good deeds are like polluted garments we have all with withered like leaves blown away by our iniquities iniquities sinfulness become part of the day like we drink water we don't even feel the pain of it we don't even feel through our sin we just hurt our god we just hide away the face of god we move away from the power and presence of god we don't understand isaiah 59 says very clearly verse 1 and 2 it is not my hand is short that i am not able to reach you whenever you call me lord lord why i am not able to reach you it is your sin what is this sin the sin becomes wall between you and your god what is this sin i don't seek you i don't hold on to you i don't be filled with your light so the darkness become part of my life there is no one who hungers for god there is no one holds on to god and moves with god because we don't move with him the evil moves with us because we don't move with the dreams and programs of god the vision of god the dreams of satan automatically becomes part of me part of our lives this is the tragedy of christian god christian living man who thinks that he is being a christian he is baptized he goes behind novenas he goes behind somebody has the power i need that power as though you are a powerless fellow as though you are an empty vessel every time the life of devotion has ruined many many christians and catholics not to experience the power and glory of god which be- belongs to them saint paul said i give you the secret what is the secret the king of glory who leads you to glory is within you be aware of him and live by him hold on to him you feel like not feeling like sitting immediately why are you allowing that spirit immediately call on praise him thank god worship god the enemy is after you because you are not holding on to me today the enemy has the havoc in the lives of many why are you not rousing yourself the word of god says very clearly there is no one who calls upon the name of the lord and who rouses himself who raises himself who empowers himself nobody will empower you you how to empower yourself in the lord that's what we read in first samuel chapter 30 verse 6 his for he thought his wife will always stand by him his wife did not know what to do one side husband one side father so she says my father is coming what shall i do i will open the window jump the human people will only show the way to escape from the problem but the the life is not finding solution for the problem but be part of the solution 
you be the part of the solution you be the part of the light you be the part of the life you be part of the glory if you don't the chosen vessels don't carry the glory of god who will carry if you don't dispel the darkness which is which is destroying people who will dispel the darkness if you don't bring glory to your family which is already ruining if you don't kneel and bring the power of god the light for your family who will bring the tragedy is everybody holds on to their problem holds on to their situation and they go on talk 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 of their problems talk of their misery talk of their death jesus said in john chapter 17 we have a beautiful statement verse 41 jesus prayed father you have always heard my prayer he says father you always hear my prayer that the first thing comes out of his mouth if great things have to be done by you for the lord great things have to be cut by you you have to move with great things if great things have to move your life and great things have to be done in your life no i am lethargic i am tired here i am here no time to kneel down if you don't kneel before god satan will stand up beside you the lethargic sitting habits of so many people have destroyed many christians who are the early christians they are kneeling christians who is monica who saved her son drunkard son into a saint who is that lady at the age of 72 she was a woman of kneeling today the beautiful life of kneeling fasting and praying is gone and nobody is bothered nobody talks it gives pain jesus comes spending the whole night in prayer he comes down and the father of a boy runs in mark 9 what i am saying is recorded in mark 9 the boy his father comes sir sir my son is dying with dying with the evil spirit and the evil spirit throws him into the water into the fire i told your disciples but they are not able to cast it away that was a great sad day for the master you will come listen to the word of god and go away if you don't carry him if you don't carry his power people will say to the master your disciples are not able to do anything then the ministry is a failure the mission is a failure the call is a failure call is i want to be somebody i want some identity is that is that when will i be roused up to the truth when will i be roused up to the ministry why don't you cry to him why don't you hunger for him why don't you lord i will not leave you until you bless me that was the prayer of jacob why that prayer is not part of my prayer why i am not able to pray like my master the master told that father bring that boy cast it away when they asked jesus why couldn't we do he said this is possible only by prayer and fasting fasting and praying the 72 year old woman monica is always an example for us the 42 year old streets of avila is an example for us life of fasting many people want to come out of their problems but who wants to hold on to the solution no father i have this problem i have that problem this habit that habit i want to move are nobody can remove your habit man 
unless you possess him possess the one who can remove your habit everybody wants make me great give me i want to i want to do this i want to do that i want to speak i want to do but the tragedy is bible says you know what will happen where does the enemy enter into our lives this is the key for you secret for you those who can understand understand it verse 6 there is no one there is no one gets up and the first activity of their life is calling upon your name no one who rouses himself rouse means an activity is an extra activity is an effortful activity nobody will give you have to take the effort to grow in his power in his presence he gives us salvation freely but anointing is received with the price you have to pay the price salvation is given freely but anointing and working for the ministry is done with the effort one has to rouse oneself when you when you don't rouse up yourself what will happen that also the master is telling very clearly for those who are willing to understand the truth no 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 i will live my life go and die who can nobody can help you i got disturbed i got this go you have to rouse up yourself you have to kneel down you have to call upon him lord i need you if you have done to him why not to me this is a journey it's a cry it's a pain if you don't want to be part of that sorry that's why isaiah 60 said the whole world is lying in darkness but upon you i want to give my light but are you prepared for it are you prepared to pay the price for it that's why isaiah says this secret thing no one rouses himself to lay hold on to you so because they don't hold on to you they want to go for prayer meetings why they want to hide their problems many people hide their problems in the prayer meetings if i at home my conscience will say oh, you have not done this you have not you have not prayed uh, so go to the prayer meetings clap say hallelujah uh, and you are okay okay psychological i prayed prayed what prayed stupid you are not hold on to him the one who gives life it's not true many run to prayer meetings to hide themselves to hide their prayerlessness to hide their helplessness prayer is not a place to cry over your problem prayer is a place a place where you empower yourself you get back to your root prayer is a place where you are empowered with a mission for which god has created you prayer is a place where you encounter your master and encounter the mission the ministry for which god has dreamt and called you when you are in the womb of your mother my dear friends sangamam plus tv is god's gift for you for our times like comment share and subscribe god will do wonders in your life praise the lord